Genesis 21, 16 to 21. And she, Genesis 21, 16 to 21. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. You will not see your child die. You will not see your dream die. And she sat over against him and lift up. On the line, he didn't say lifted. He said lift up. So it's applicable today. Lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And <laughs> my God. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What a let thee, Hagar? Fear not. For God had heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand. I'll make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes. She saw a well of water. She's been sitting there all this while. And filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad. And he dwelt in the wilderness and became... And Acha, and he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. His mother took him, a wife, out of the land of Egypt. The praying woman. The praying woman. There are different kinds of women. If I'm going to start bringing them from scriptures with references, you get over 10 or 15. But we have, we have taken so much time, I'll pick out maybe four or five women different categories of women in the Bible that the Bible notes and records in scripture. Proverbs 6, 26 tells us about the warish woman. He said the warish woman reduces a man to a morsel of bread. If you are addicted to the warish woman, you'll be reduced to a piece of bread. Can we get another translation, the message or the TPT or just on this one? Others, you may not need to diversify. For the account of a prostitute, one is reduced to a piece of bread to be eaten up. And the immoral woman hunts with hooks. Okay? Message translation, you can buy an hour with a whore for a loaf of bread. But a wanton woman may eat you, may well eat you alive. The warish woman can eat you alive. The Bible tells us about the warish woman. In Proverbs 21 verse 9, the Bible talks about the brawling woman. In Proverbs 21 9, and also Proverbs 25, I think verse 24. He says, it's better to be on one corner of a house top than to be with a brawling woman in a white house. The brawling woman is the second category of woman that the Bible notes. In Proverbs 21, 19, the angry woman, the temperamental woman. Proverbs 21, 19, he said it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. When you live with a woman who has temper issues, aggressive in nature, give us another translation, let's see what it says. Aggressive in nature, the Bible said it's better you stay in the wilderness. It's better to to dwell in a desert land that with a contentious and fretful when you are a lady who has no control over the way you react to issues the bible says it's better for your husband to stay in the wilderness relate with animals at least he can predict their reactions because you can do anything crazy amen it's terrible but another kind of woman the Bible talks about in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, is the virtuous woman. The Bible says she's a crown to her husband. She's a crown to her husband. Proverbs 12, verse 4 says she's a crown to her husband. Proverbs 31, verse 10, the Bible says the virtuous woman is far above rubies. Is far above rubies. Proverbs 31, verse 10, I said not 9. 
31 verse 10. She is far above rubies. The Bible says, who can find her? In other words, the virtuous woman is, needs to be discovered. You have to discover virtue in that woman. You have to bring out the virtue in the woman. In Proverbs 31 verse 30, the Bible tells us about another class of woman. It says, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But the woman that fears the Lord, that was the class of the woman with the fear of God. How many, how many, how many times have I given you? How many? Five. The, the woman that has the fear of God. Beauty, favor. When the Bible talks about favor, there's talk of charm. If you bring out that translation, you see that. Charm. To be, to be, to be, to appeal to people. There are people that possess poise. They have this poise, this charm. They are easily admired. Charm can mislead. Charm. There are women, you see them, you just, they are very likable. He said, that can mislead. Beauty soon fades. But the woman to be admired is the woman who lives. She lives in an apartment, an ambience, an environment called the fear of God. But today I want to emphasize on the category of woman, which is found in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 to 19. The wealthy woman, the woman of prayer. The Bible said, God said to them, take out the wailing woman, the woman of prayer. A message from the Almighty God that means, look over the trouble we are in. Bring the, 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 the King James. The King James, please. The new King James. Consider ye and call for the mourning women, that they may come, and send for calling women, that they may come. Verse 18. And let us not make haste. Take up wailing for us. No family is useless that has a praying woman. No family is worthless that still has a woman that can pray. If there's anything you must learn growing up as a lady, is the capacity to pray. Because when you become a mother, you discover clothes, dressing becomes a finitesima. Almost irrelevant if you don't understand prayer. And that's why when I see people today, especially ladies, when prayer is going on, they are sitting down. When prayer is going on, they are complacent. I begin to imagine the kind of mother they will turn out to be. You don't like prayer as a girl, you'll be useless as a woman. If you don't like prayer as a girl, as a mother, you'll be useless. Even if you are lazy to pray, develop appetite. Because a time will come that the only virtue that will be admirable is your capacity to pray. Am I communicating now? Am I communicating now? Am I communicating now? A capacity for you to pray. A capacity for you to call upon God. So there's a generation of people who will not... Another category of women actually is what I call the damage control women. Women that will use their hand to destroy and think of how to manage. If you see 2 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 19, the Bible talks about two women that lived in the same house. He said one of them overlaid on her child. She slept and she rolled on her child. Ladies and gentlemen, can we do an experiment? How many of you know if you hit a newborn baby, the baby will cry out? Huh? The baby will cry. So what kind of sleep was a woman sleeping? That she rolled on her child and slept on her child. She didn't hear the child cry. There are mothers that are like that. They sleep as if they are injected. For a child to die is a process. The child must have cried, wailed, snuffed and struggled for life. The mother was still sleeping. There are mothers today, their children are being wasted. They are still sleeping. Their marriages is in shambles. They are still sleeping. You can see your child. You look at your child by the character and attitude. You are not sure this child has a future and you are still sleeping. Looking at your child, you are not sure this child will turn out to become responsible in the society. You are still sleeping. When God wants to ask questions about children. He doesn't go to the father. He goes to the mother. When God wants to ask questions, how children turn out to become, God does not go to fathers. He goes to mothers. When Ishmael cried, God had a covenant with Abraham, but God never spoke to Abraham. God spoke and cried out to Hagar. How can you watch your child being wasted? 
How can a mother? Your children are not married and you are still eating. Your children are over 30 and none is married. You can still eat. Your children are wasted. All of them are graduates, no job, and you are still relaxed. You are still moving about unbothered. Child of God, as a mother, it becomes your responsibility to say to God, I can't watch my child die. I can't watch my child be wasted. I was married. How come my daughter is not married? God said male and female created in them. I can't watch my children suffer. I can't watch my children wasted. I can't watch my children useless. If it's a family power, I will stay at work at night until they bow to my God. If it's an altar that is wasting my children, I will not sleep until they let them be. Why am I alive? How can a mother be alive? and your children are in pain your children are in captivity that is why you are a mother they came to this world through you nobody has your permission to molest them nobody has your permission ay, 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 ay. Nobody has your permission to embarrass them. You are a mother. But it's time to be a praying woman. It's time to lift your voice. Like David said, I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from God who made the heavens and the earth. I will not watch my children die. I will not watch my children useless. I will not watch my children wasted. That devil is a liar. Somebody shot fire, fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Motherhood is a calling. It's not just a decision. It's a calling. So for those of you who are thinking of getting married and you're now imagining becoming a mother giving birth which I say calling in John 19 26 Jesus said woman behold thy son son behold thy mother Jesus is a calling it takes a special anointing to be a mother of capacity it takes an anointing to be a mother of audacity Sir, it takes an anointing, a violent, aggressive anointing to be a mother that is pleasing in the sight of God. And it takes a higher dimension to be a praying mother. Am I talking to somebody here? That is one thing I give credit to my mother for. I grew up to see my mother pray. Sometimes when my mother said to me, go and check something, you know, bring out something in my bag. When I go to her bag, <laughs> I will see picture of the children in different portions of her Bible. My own picture was the worst out of it. The picture had changed color because she has held it many times and sweated on it. Am I speaking here? And she had prayed one time I was passing through a room and I heard her praying in tears calling my name and saying God this child will not be useless God this child will not be worthless God this child will not be wasted you don't quarrel with them you pray for them never 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 address an issue physically that you have not arrested spiritually before you address it physically arrest it spiritually am i speaking to somebody right now before you address it in the physical arrest it in the spiritual the bible says he said i will not watch this child die you are looking your children are getting wasted the first one got married without a husband you did nothing the second got married without a husband you did nothing the first graduated no job you did nothing all of them are grown up no one is under a man you i will not watch my children die i will not watch my husband suffer your husband was fired from work you did nothing a praying woman you don't come close to her family a praying woman you don't come close to her husband a praying woman you don't come close you see women don't understand the, the power they possess when Jesus appeared the Bible says Peter and John saw the grave clothes 
they saw the empty tomb the master was around and never spoke to them in John 2015 it was a woman he spoke to woman why do you cry whom do you seek why do you cry whom do you seek in other words if you want to stop crying as a woman start seeking him not what do you seek don't seek clothes a time comes as a woman you understand that being a mother is beyond wearing clothes you may not be able to afford clothes like other women but afford prayer that they cannot afford you may not be able to afford a wrapper attire like other women but there's something you can afford that they don't buy in the market it is called being the praying woman you may not be able to meet up with your mate and your peers but there is something that you can afford that you don't buy with money it is called the capacity to pray am i speaking to somebody right now it's called the unction to pray woman why do you weep whom do you seek if you must stop weeping and stop crying you must seek him like Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 10 that I may know him reduce the, reduce the, the Twitter on this mind reduce the Twitter and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship why do you cry why do you weep? It takes an understanding. They came to Esther. They said, there is a decree that has been passed. Esther said, there's a way we handle matters like this. There was a law. You can't approach the king. You can't approach the king except on invitation. Esther said, there is a way we bind to the heart of these people. What was the first thing Esther did to become a wife? What she did to become a wife was prayer. To maintain a motherhood. To maintain being a wife is prayer. There are so many women who were so on fire before they got married. As soon as they got married, they felt they have entered their rest. It's like they have entered, not knowing now you are married. You just started an assignment. What is obtained by prayer is maintained with prayer. You just started an assignment. Esther! The first thing Esther found out. I think in the realm of the spirit was that how come this man called him man is somebody that my husband is so addicted to how come my husband has promoted him my husband has given him offices my husband has given him promotion my husband has elevated him and what do I now do to the extent a man knows I am a Jew he knows I'm a Jew yet he he brought out documents for all my people to be destroyed. If the Jews were destroyed, it means that Esther will be destroyed. Listen to me. Esther could have thought that as a queen she would be exempted. But she knew that there's something stronger than royalty. It is blood. Most times as a mother, if you understand that the shame of your child is your shame, the disgrace of your husband is your disgrace, the pain of your husband is your pain. When you connect and relate it to yourself, you become more dedicated and more careful. Esther thought, how come my husband is this worthless around this man? He must have given him something to eat. This man must have given him something to eat. No problem. I will prepare a banquet. I will also give him something to eat. Not only will I give my husband something to eat, even the man coming, I will also give him something to eat. Uh, if you use something on him, I will use something else. The Bible said the first time, she invited, <laughs> invited them to the banquet. I'm sure that first time what she gave them to eat was to neutralize what Haman gave them to eat. The second time she invited them again and this time she gave them something to eat as the king ate it. The king said, what do you want? There is a way a woman can, your husband that is so aggressive, he wouldn't listen to you. There's a way a woman can be cooking and be blasting tongues. You lay hands on the pots, you are speaking in tongues. As the man eat them, Holy Ghost or tomorrow. <laughs> As he ate it, he look at you. Hey, he look at you again. He look at you. 
He clears his throat. He takes the third spoon of I look at you. He said, Come and sit by my side. Uh, why have I be angry with you, sir? I didn't know you are this beautiful. You don't need to visit a herbalist when you can speak in tongues. You don't need to visit a native doctor when you can speak in tongues. You do not need to visit any malam when you can speak in tongues. There is a way to pray. There is a way to handle a marriage. There's a way to handle a home. Am I talking to somebody right now? Is a calling. Haga. So a child. I'm learning foundation. Haga, so a child. Almost be wasted. Do you know what it means to wake up every day? You see your children in pain and you can do nothing about it. Haga was looking at her son dying. The son was dying. There's nothing she could do. Do you know the pain it is as a mother? Your children are jobless. You have no connection. There's nobody you know. You have come to the, your wit's end. You have come to the end of yourself. Switch to prayer. Switch to prayer. As a mother, stop saying I don't have anybody. You have prayer. Stop saying I don't have anyone to call to. You have prayer. Am I speaking Am I speaking here? Your daughter just called you. He said, Mommy, I just had a miscarriage. Don't scream. Don't shout. Blast in tongues. Laka parakata. Ekosopalakata. Your son just told you, Mommy, I don't know. I am having an exam tomorrow. But there's a way my body is reacting. Manka pata kata seke. Bronde se palariata. Ike peredosha. They just. They, I mean, they just rushed me to the hospital, to the, the school hospital, because they found and detected I had something in my body. Manta soprata, lekrade shata. You switch into the element of prayer. She was seeing a child dying. Many would have given up. Many would have said, I can't watch this happen. And she cried. She cried. She cried. Hear this. The child started crying. Heaven said nothing until the mother cried. The child started crying. Heaven said nothing until the mother cried. There are prayers your children are praying that heaven is silent, waiting for your own prayer. That is why I tell children, no matter the way you pray, call your mother, say, pray for me. Because it is a prayer that amplifies yours. Oh, nobody's following me today. There's a place for the father. We'll discuss that on Father's Day. But let's handle the place of the mother. Hey, let's handle the place of the mother. Let's handle. There are damage control mothers. The woman we saw in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 29 is a damage control woman. She agreed. You know, some people think life is a joke. They are very unserious. They think life is a joke. A woman came to you and said, let's eat my child today. Tomorrow we eat your own child. You think it's a joke? There are things people say. They are not joking. They are just telling you who they are. It's not a joke. Let's eat my child today. And tomorrow we eat your own. He says, so we boiled my son. Ladies and gentlemen, to, to think of killing your child. It takes a level of wickedness. It takes another level of wickedness to think of eating the child. It takes a higher level of wickedness to, to boil. You didn't get what I said? To butcher, dismember, bisect the child. And boil. Boiling is a process. It's procedural. You wait for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the child is boiling. You are checking to see if it's done. Oh, nobody's following what I'm talking about. It takes a level of wickedness. This woman, they ate the child. Now, it takes demonic impudence, witchcraft insolence. It takes, it takes diabolic audacity to walk to a king the next day. King! I want to tell you, Mr. King, tell that woman that if she knows what is good for her, 
Let her bring her child for us to chop. It's a chopulation season. We, we, uh, we need to eat our child now. We have eaten. It, imagine the audacity. Say, please, tell, not I am sorry we ate a child. I am sorry I, I was foolish enough to connive with this woman. No. Warn her. If she does not want to see my red eye, let her bring her son for eating. There are people, wickedness to them is normal. Wickedness to them is normal. The other mother said, no, it's not possible. Until a mother gives out a child, nobody can collect. Am I talking here? When your children, you see certain characters, lay hands on them. Say, I didn't give you out. I didn't give you out. I didn't give you to people. I didn't give you to wickedness. Nobody can send this arrow. I didn't give you out. I am your mother. I did not give you out. So anyone that has fired bad characters and attitude, let that person inherit it. Anyone that say you can't get married, let that person inherit it. I didn't give you out. Am I talking to somebody now? I did not give you out. What a mother has not given out, no stranger can collect it. You didn't give out your children. No power can manipulate them. You didn't give out your, oh my God. You didn't give out your children. No power can stop them. You didn't give out your children. They will not die before their time. You didn't give out your children. They will fulfill their destiny. You didn't give out your children. No one can use them for slaughter. You didn't give out your children. They will not die premature. Somebody say, I didn't give out my children. Every mother say, I did not give out my children. A generation when wickedness is natural. When wickedness is natural. Hatred and envy is natural. Growing up, when somebody is doing well and you hear, the, 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 the natural reaction is to be happy. But now, somebody is doing well, the natural, the natural reaction is envy. 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 Some mothers are hiding their children. Am I speaking here? And it is very important. Hide your child. Hide your child. Hide your child. They say, and she went and hid her child. Hide your child. There are times some people ask you, where is your daughter? She's fine. Where is he? She's fine. How is she doing? She's fine. Where is she now? She's fine. Where is she? She's fine. Where is she? She's fine. And they ask you again, why you say she's fine? You don't want to tell me where she is. What is your business? Some of us, what, what the people don't know, we give them. So they, you see, Satan is not all knowing. He works on the information that you give him. You have an announcement. Somebody just proposed to your daughter. Your son just had some, came across somebody he liked and just mentioned to you. Pwah! You have taken to the marketplace. You are narrating to everybody. Am I talking to somebody here? You are narrating to everybody. Hide your children! What people don't know, they can destroy. What they don't understand, they criticize, they gossip. What they understand, they destroy. What they know, they destroy. I was talking to somebody, say, Apostle, you say it's not church that gives you money. How do you get money? I say, what is your business? What's your business? Why do you want to know? You're, you're a mother, you're just talking as if you're on that trial. Must you answer every question? You're not on that trial. Nobody, no, see, you see, nobody can come after what they don't know. Hide your son! Hide your daughter! Because you want somebody to feel intimidated. Your son's result, you carry it to the market square. And you are showing everybody. And they are laying their demonic hands. And speaking into his brain. They are turning the recesses of his mind. And in the next couple of months, he begins to do poorly academically because you announced. There are some people that should not know about your children's wedding until a week to the time. I'm talking to you and I'm serious. 
Let everything be set. So you're just saying, my daughter is married next week. Ah, you didn't tell me. Tell you for what? As what? That was, that was the problem Joseph had. Joseph will announce dream that he does not understand. Uh, this is what I saw. Why are you narrating what you don't understand? And none of your brother is a dream interpreter. None! It, it, Joseph was talking a lot. When he got to Egypt, he learned his lesson. He didn't tell Pharaoh his father was still alive. Until the father came. And Pharaoh said, you have a family? He said, yes, sir. You didn't tell me. He said, sir, I entered pit because I talk. I entered prison because I talk. I learned how not to talk. I learned to keep things to myself. The worth of an individual is your capacity to keep secrets. Keep secrets. If people tell you are too secretive, it's not a crime. Being too secretive is not a crime. Nobody's following me today. How can you tell people things, people that can't help you? The Bible says, Maho Salah It says, and the woman's son died. And Elijah said to Gehazi, Go and ask her. It's all well. And Gehazi met the woman. He said, Woman, it's all well. She said, All is well. A child was dead. Yes, yeah, she said, All is well. Gehazi, all is well. In other words, you cannot help me. I can't tell you the condition of my child because you cannot help me. And when she met Elijah, she said, why did you lie to me? My child is dead. In other words, I only open up secrets to people that have impact, to people that can make my life better. Stop exposing your children. Stop exposing your family. Stop narrating your husband. Stop picking up the phone and calling your mother, calling your father in your marriage. Let them rest. This is your home. Your brothers, your sister should not determine how you run your home. Am I talking to somebody here? That's your, <laughs> that's your demonic ecula box. Little correct. And they go, you are packing your load. One little error. Some have that in their bag. It's very close to the door. Just make them angry. When the woman starts humming. There's a problem somewhere. Arrange everything. Give me transport. Where are you going? Where are you for carrying me? My father has a house, though. No! You tell your mom, your mom tell her friend, your friend, your mom's friend tell another friend. Why do that when you can pray? When you can change situations. When you can change this. The praying woman, number one, is a woman that takes responsibility. Responsibility! society when your child turns out wayward blame your prayerlessness don't blame bad friends when your child turns out wayward blame your prayerlessness don't blame the culture civilization technology there is what you inculcate on a child that even in the midst of chaos the child maintains character it has been prayed into the child it has been imputed into the child it has been imparted into the child am I communicating here? am I communicating here that you begin to understand 
understand how to raise them that is your responsibility as a mother the child cried the mother said no my child must not die i can't watch my child die you know there's a scripture we quote all the time we, we make reference that the virtuous woman proverbs 31 we record that we read that that scripture actually we use that for women but it was not a scripture written to a woman it was a scripture written by a woman an advice to a son consigning women she was advising her son she was a queen her son was a king solomon was also a king verse 1 of proverbs 31 verse 1 he said the words of king lemoyer the prophecy that his mother taught him that scripture about the virtuous woman because the mother knew that every king is exposed to several women they don't even know those who love them every king in royalty has access to marrying a hundred fifty women they are exposed to all that so the mother she grew up as a queen in the palace she knew what the son will encounter so she stood and began to teach the son on the qualities of a good woman she began to expose to the son the character of a good woman and also expose what a bad one looks like. Read verse 2. I think if we just run through some couple of the verses, we'll be able to understand. Come on verse 2. Bring up verse 2. What my son. You can see that it was, she was talking to her son. You see that? Can you see that? What my son. The son of what? my womb what son the son of my vows verse 3 give not thy strength to women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings number four is not for king O Lemuel is is not for kings to drink wine not for princes to drink strong drink that royalty permits it does not mean Christianity accepts it lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Verse 6. Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. Those who say, oh, alcohol is not a sin, tell them no problem. This is what the Bible says. If you are ready to perish, take strong drink. And wine to those that be of heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Remember his misery no more. Verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such that are pointed to destruction. The mother was advising him. Open thy mouth, judge righteously. You can see it was a counsel on how to be a king when he grows up. And guess what? King Lemoy and Solomon were friends. So it was a counsel given by Solomon, which he heard from King Lemoy. And if Solomon talks to you about marriage, listing, if Solomon counsels you about women listing, he had 1,000 at his command. He was an authority in that department. A dean of faculty. A force in that establishment. He had the curriculum vitae of their dimensions and operations. Verse 10. The Bible says, a prize. We began to talk about the virtuous woman began to expose and explain them so you, if you want to live long as an individual you as a woman you must understand anything wrong you see around your family becomes your responsibility to tackle in the place of prayer one time jesus was preaching in luke chapter 8 from verse 20 the bible says, people came and said thy mother is outside waiting to see you in other words in the midst of jesus's ministration the mother interrupted it um her concern was the ministration she needed a son to do well she needed a son to enjoy the best of ministry the bible says in first kings chapter 11 atalia killed all the royal children atalia wasted all the royal children first kings 11 from verse 1 he said in verse 2 but joshua hid asa hid asa 
and hid Asa, and Asa was preserved, and Asa was protected. First Kings 1, sorry, from verse 11, Asa was protected. The Bible says in John chapter 2, First Kings 1 from 11, in John chapter 2, the Bible says that Jesus was invited to a wedding, and the mother was also at the wedding, and they had no wine. It was the responsibility of the mother to scream out, First Kings 11 from verse 1, and Adonijah was to be made king, and Nathan walked in to the temple and said to Bathsheba, he said, your son is about to lose his inheritance. If you don't cry out to the king, your son might be wasted. And the Bible says, she approached the king and spoke into the king and said, did you not make a promise to me that Solomon, my son, shall become king? It is your responsibility as a woman. Carry responsibility. Asa grew up in the house of the Lord. Second Kings 11 verse 3. Asa grew up in the house of the Lord because Joshua had hid him. Hide your children in the house of the Lord. Don't have a child that is not in the department. Hide them there. Hide them there. Don't have a child that's not working for God. Second Kings 11 verse 3. He said, six years he was with her. Hid! This is where to hide children. Nobody's following me. Tell the Lord if you will not hear me because of anything else. Hear me! How come your, 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 your son does nothing for God? There are some people that are not departmental. It doesn't mean anything. I don't want trouble. I'm not in the department because I don't want trouble. That's when trouble comes. Oh, have you seen Job chapter 3 verse 26? Job 3 26. I was not in safety, neither had that rest. Neither was I quiet. Yeah, trouble came. The more you think you are running from trouble, the more trouble is coming. Trouble avoids those that trouble trouble. If you want trouble to stop, you must face trouble. Running from trouble is actually inviting trouble. What is your child doing? She hit them! In the house of the Lord. I wish I was talking to somebody. Have a child that is departmental. Have somebody. Have a child that's working for God. This is the best place to hide them. This is the best place to groom them. To raise them in the fear of God. Take responsibility. Stop complaining. I don't complain about my children. I don't have a cane in my house because there's no cow in my house. How do you keep a cane or a horse whip in your house? Because you think your children are animals. There is something a cane cannot do. There is something nagging your daughter cannot do. Prayer can do it. When she begins to give you all the testimonies, you are smiling. When she's giving you all the solutions, you are smiling it is handled on the place of prayer number two as a praying mother convert your pain to power turn your pain to power what happened to Hagar Hagar was a maid a house help under Sarah and the Bible says Sarah met Hagar and said I want to talk to you let's have a communication he said as a woman, I have tried to be pregnant. It's not possible. I want you to make my husband happy. Get pregnant for him. Because I am aging. I don't want this man who has been so good to me to leave this world without a child. Let her, let's have an agreement. And the Bible says, Aga got pregnant. Took him. After being pregnant, certain things transpired. The same Sarah said to his hand, Abraham, Send her away. Abraham himself sent her away. So it's a story of two dimensions of betrayal, used and dumb. Betrayal and rejection. It was pain. And if you check every woman, nothing hurts a woman like these two elements rejection and betrayal rejection and betrayal every woman likes to be appreciated when your wife dresses up and you say nothing it's like you killed her when your wife dresses up 
you don't compliment her. She passes you. Rather than giving a hug, you are trying to avoid body contact. You killed her. Every woman loves to be appreciated. To be told you look good. To be told you look wonderful. And there are some men, I don't know the covenant, the, 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 the force that is fighting their mouth. And you think that they are quiet. They are not quiet, oh. It's not that it's a, it's, a, it's a nature. They are not quiet. To appreciate their wife is like there's a cancer. They have cancer of the mouth. Anytime the woman appears well, to open up and say, oh, wow, you look wonderful. There is cancer, but they can complain about character. They can complain about fault. Any mistake she made, they can complain. But they have never complimented. How do you complain on whom you have never complimented? You have never told her she looks wonderful. No. There's no time you have told your wife her food is good. But you can complain about pepper, you can complain about salt, you can complain about excess no cube, you can complain about extravagant aginomoto, you can complain about excess oil, you can complain about all kinds of things, but you have never complained. In fact, if some people complain, it's better. They will embarrass the woman testing the food, they scream. Hmm. Pwah. I'm not sure there's any salt in River Ninja again. You, you complain, you are, you are so annoying, but you have never complimented that woman to say you look good, you look wonderful. You must know what they like and do it. Know what your wife likes. Know what they like. Or God, know what they like. Even if you don't like it naturally, like it maritally. If you don't like it naturally, like it by what? Maritally. Like it by the extension of marriage. Am I communicating here? You have to like it. Are you listening? There are things you need to start as a man, start tolerating. This is who they are. You know, where we have an understanding, do you know why there are issues at home? Because people come from different backgrounds. When you are coming to become one, you must, you must, Understand how to coexist. Hello? Stop saying she's bad. No. That's who she is. Like her for it. 